guys, welcome. You want to know I'm so happy to have you here watching and listening? This is the season finale of Kyle Brandt's Basement. This is the season finale. We're going into hiatus mode. I promise we'll be back. We may be in a slightly different basement. We'll get into that, but this is the last episode of season one Kyle Brandt's Basement that we started back in September. Lots changed. Lots changed. You're here. I'm here. Thank you. I appreciate you. You know what hasn't changed? I'm going to tell you about what I love, what I hate, and what's hilarious, but don't start the opening yet because I have to tease it. That's what you do here. Off the open, you always tease it. I'm going to just kind of kiss goodbye to the AFC storylines. They're just going to fester and bake and percolate over the next few months, and I'm going to rank them because that's what we do this time of year. We rank. I'm going to talk about something that's really bothering NFL fans that's not bothering me, but I'm bothered that you guys are bothered. And then hilarious, there's a fantastic thing that went down in the state of Texas last night involving sports and alcohol. And last of all, say anything. Your voicemails, you call the answering machine, we pick them up, you can what? Say anything. It's part of what comes after what I love. I should be able to have it at this point. It's the season finale. What I love, what I hate, you know it, and what's hilarious. Come on. So since I'm standing here in the old KBB batter's box taking last wraps, last licks at really what is the lifeblood of the show, and that is the NFL's AFC, the American Football Conference, uh, before we rollerblade into hiatus, let's just say for once and for all before we come back, the big old whale storylines in the AFC, the ones that when any show goes away, comes back, or starts up even in July, training camp, in August, September, wherever it may be, what are we cooking? If we got five little burners on our stove, back left, back right, front left, front right, right in the center, what are the five AFC storylines that are on those beautiful stove tops? Here you go, number five, going to 2023. Lamar and the Ravens. It was really one of the two massive stories of the offseason. Now, he's there, he is signed, he is paid, he has been gifted old receivers, Odell, young receivers, Zay Flowers, young-ish receivers, Rashad Bateman. Lamar is, is ready to roll. If he is a superstar quarterback, if he is a big-time caliber guy, then Baltimore should be cooking next year. Happy, motivated, healthy, loaded, running games back. John Harbaugh is always there. The defense will figure their things out, and they're going to try to go after Cincinnati. That's only number five. Number five. Number four. Our guys, Western New York, Josh Allen, the Buffalo Bills. What do you say? Is this it? Say any cliche you want. Monkey off your back. Slay the dragon. Get over the hump. Exercise the demons. The team looks good. The two star safeties are back. There's this young star tight end to show up to play next to the other tight end who was in the Pro Bowl. You got young running backs. You got the defense. You got the coach. You got Vaughn. You got JA-17. Come on now. You only get so many whacks at this thing before it's some sort of uh, changing of the guard or the old guy's in. You got to spend on a bunch of rookies. Will the Bills do it? It really exciting. That's number four. Number three, the rise of Joe Burrow. Does it continue? The ascension of Joe Burrow. Is Joe Burrow another really good AFC quarterback amongst five or six of them? Or is he up in this penthouse with Mahomes? Could he potentially exceed Mahomes at some point? Are the Bengals going to win a Super Bowl? They have mattered for a few years in a row now. Do they take the next jump? Not everybody can take the next jump. If the Bills are taking the next jump, the Bengals are not, and vice versa. Number two, the New York Jets. The Jets bet on Rodgers. Their quarterbacks have sucked for the better part of 70 years. Their team has sucked for the better part of... 20 years almost now at this point, at least 10, 15, whatever. It's the Jets. You know my damn point. Is Rodgers going to work? Is he going to show up and just absolutely go nuts and be like, do you guys thought I was old? Green Bay let me leave. I'm going to go after the MVP this year. I want us to be the one seed in the AFC, the two seed. Will it work or is it just a complete debacle? I think it's probably more likely the first one. And then the number one storyline in the AFC is we step away to rejoin for the 2023 season when it starts kicking off around training camp. It's the Kansas City Chiefs. You may not like them. You may not love them. You may hate them. 
but they're the best thing going. That is an irrefutable fact. Are we in the middle of the Chiefs dynasty? Is this going to be one where they grab three Super Bowls and they grab four Super Bowls? Are we going to have the conversation if the Chiefs just do this damn thing again? Is Mahomes going to catch Brady someday? We don't know. It, all the superlatives are involved if the, if the Chiefs can really go and get after this thing again. If this is the most talented AFC we've ever seen, if this is the most talented AFC quarterback we've ever seen, and Mahomes drops in another trip to the Super Bowl, another ring, then what does that say about him? This is not a soft, fragile AFC, NFC, NFL. It's the most talented we have ever seen, the most high paid, the fastest, and Mahomes, it seems to be the guy. If he wins another one, that D word is everywhere, dynasty. If he doesn't, maybe you come back to the pack and Allen, Mahomes, and Herbert, who the hell knows, Lamar can really make this thing a big old Royal Rumble. Oh, we're gonna pick it up when I get back, but right now, those are the top five. Let's move on to something drastically different that I actually hate. I like to see the NFL fans happy. I'm one of you. I've uh, split appetizers with you. I've drank with you. I've bled with you. I've sweat with you. I've cried with you. So I want you guys to be happy. And I do not like that there are many among us as fans that are not happy because the NFL done struck a deal with Peacock, the streaming service for NBC. And uh, there will be a wild card game. There will be a playoff game exclusively on Peacock. It'll be a Saturday night game. And it will be not available on Fox, not available on NBC, not available on CBS or ESPN, none of, not even Amazon. Only on that app that you might not have and that maybe you do have just to watch episodes of The Office. It's coming and there's people who are angry about it. There's people who are frustrated about it. Um, it's something about comfort and I relate to this. I'm not frustrated about it, but I know why people are because you just can something just not constantly change and not constantly go to tech and streaming? And can I just sit down once a year in January and watch my damn playoff games on the same channel I always have, or the same channel I have when I was a kid, or the same channel that my father did? Can I, does everything have to change? Yeah, it does. It does. It's happening no matter whether you like it or I like it, the streaming thing is going to be dominant, not only in your favorite shows and series and things like that, but in your favorite teams, quarterbacks, players, and coaches. It is happening. I understand the frustration. Um, I don't share it, like I said. What is the big problem that you have? Let's try to identify this. If you are someone, like my friend, industry colleague Jimmy Trana, who writes for SI, is a media critic, it's what he does, gets so pissed about streaming games and is not thrilled about the NFL's uh, agreement with Peacock. What's the problem? There seems to be this idea that, ah, you got to go to the app and it's, it's buggy and it doesn't work. Is it? I, I remember going to Amazon every week last year. You go to Amazon, you click it, spins for five seconds, comes up. If you got Wi-Fi, you know, um, then you click on, oh, look at this beautiful graphic. You go to it and there's Carissa. And then you just sit there and kind of watch it like normal. So I don't really have a problem with it. I've heard I don't like watching games while on streaming because I like to flip channels. Are you still flipping channels? <laughs> to what? Reruns of Raymond? What, what are you looking for in the other channels? Don't you just look at your phone 90% of the time that you're watching a game anyway? So if they go to a break, is to piss you off? You have to get out of the, the, the Peacock app or the Amazon app and then go back to regular TV? I, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't flipped channels in a long time. I really, you go to you watch your TV show, whatever it may be, or you go and watch Red Zone or whatever that may be. I mean, I, I feel like it's been 10 years since I've just gone channel surfing randomly. If anything, maybe you go through the menu, but the menu is on your phone. You look at social media. Isn't that what everybody does? It does nothing for me. And then the crux of it, you're mad about Peacock because you don't want to pay. Understood. You don't want to pay. All right, so let's talk about that. If you feel very, very strongly that I am not paying for football, I know this is crazy, and I know this is out of, out, of, out of left field. Don't watch the game. You don't have to watch that game, all right? And I know you're saying, yeah, that's easy for you to say, I love football. I love football. I make me living off of football. You don't have to watch the Saturday night wild card game. You don't. You really don't. You have a whole Saturday of games. You have a whole Sunday and Sunday night of games. Screw the Saturday night game if you don't want to pay the money. Watch a movie. Turn it off. 
You know what's going to happen? You're going to turn on a movie, you're going to turn on House Hunters or something and have Chinese food, and you're going to be following the game on your phone anyway. You're practically going to be able to watch it. You're going to be able to see highlights, scores, everything. Don't watch the game. Or go to a bar. Get some apps, get some pictures, get some drinks, be responsible, get, go out to dinner. They got places where the game is on. You watch it for free and you don't have the indignation of forking over more of your hard-earned money to the NFL and if that makes you feel better. Last thing, pay for Peacock? Just buy it with an asterisk. Get Peacock. All right, but get it so you can watch that playoff game and then do the thing where you follow through and unsubscribe. That's where they get you. It's like a gym membership. You sign up, you just say, oh, I don't know what my password is. I, I, I don't, it's only this much a month. That's not going to hurt me. Well, those much, that much a month adds up. Get it for the playoff game. Get Peacock. And then unsubscribe the next morning. Unsubscribe that night. Unsubscribe when it's 31 to 10 and the game is over. Just unsubscribe. You'll pay for the month. What, I don't even know. It's 10 bucks. It's not much. I have Peacock. I like it. I watch things on it occasionally. But that's it. Hey, you're paying $10 for a game? Yes, you're pissed off, fine. But guys, there's going to be so many more. It's coming. The Paramount Plus thing is going to happen down the road. They're, they're all going to happen. And you're saying, yeah, $100, $110 million in the NFL. Do they really need $110 million? No, but they can take it. And they need the relationship with Peacock moving forward because $110 million to go one game now. Guys, it's going to be $10 billion to do 20 games in five years. It's coming. It's coming. So get on board. If you want to just stay in there and say, screw you, I ain't paying, fine. I'm not telling you to pay. I'm not even telling you to watch. Those are your avenues, though. The avenue that doesn't work is, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I'm going to be pissed about it. It's coming. It's happening. I love Jimmy Trana because he's like, we need, we need sort of Larry David types in a younger generation. And he has a little bit of that going. I love you, Jimmy. But don't watch, don't pay, or pay and unsubscribe. It's the best I can do is try to help you, all right? I'm under no obligation, certainly no influence from the NFL to hype up the Peacock. They don't care what I say. They care that the game is on Peacock. They got a new partner. They got a new box, new revenue stream. That's what it is. They'll be part of it or don't, but you do no good by complaining about it. Did that help at all? I like that move where you pay and then unsubscribe. Ten bucks. Fine. Get out of there. Unsubscribe. Screw them. Don't let them hook you and get me month after month. Pay. Unsubscribe. You have to watch a decent Saturday Night Wildcard game. Let's get to what's hilarious. You know, I've traveled most of the United States. I've been very lucky having weird different jobs and just going on road trips with my kids. And as a kid, I've gone to most of the major American cities in across continental. I've never been to San Antonio. I've never been there. It's just, I've had no reason to go either. I don't have any people who live there. I don't have any job obligation there. Never been in Houston, Dallas, Austin, all those places, never been to San Antonio, but I want to go. And at some point when I go, I know where I'm going to wet my whistle. I'm going to a place called the Rue Pub. R-O-O, -O, the Rue Pub. It's in San Antonio. And I love what the people who run that place did there. So you got the NBA lotteries on last night, which is kind of awkward, stilted television, but always kind of dramatic towards the end. Certainly in this case. The owners of the Rue Pub in San Antonio, they thought, all right, the Spurs have a 14% chance of being the number one overall pick. 14%. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to tell people, if the Spurs do get that number one overall pick, 14% chance, every open tab in the bar is on us. It's gone. In other words, if let's say they announced the number one pick at 8 p.m. and you were there since 6 and you had, and your friends, three pitchers and 10 cocktails in those two hours, you ran up a pretty big tab. Let's say, I don't know, that's a couple hundred bucks, maybe 180 bucks, I don't know. It's just gone, it's on the house, free drinks. It's, it's gone. It's great, but it's a way of suckering people into the pub. The Spurs are not gonna get the number four to, and the number one pick, there's only 14% chance. Ha ha, you got us, I ran up a huge tab with the 86% certainty that I would have to pay that huge tab. Only this gives something to believe in. Sometimes 14% comes through. Sometimes miracles happen. You know, it's like Grandpa Joe told Charlie in the Great Glass Elevator. You remember what happened to the boy who got, every, who got everything he wanted? And Charlie says, eh, 
He lived happily ever after. We go now to the video of the Rue Pub, a raucous group who have obviously ran up huge bar tabs and pitchers and shots and drinks. Bring up the video. And they're sitting there and it's coming down the wire. And you're gonna hear a few cheers here. But wait, okay? All right, the Spurs didn't get that pick. Now they're gonna get the two. Are they gonna get the one? We got cameras out. Okay, wait. Yeah, yeah, we got the one. It's coming through. All these drinks are free. The bartenders have hands on their heads. The owners are, I, I don't know, they're probably mad, right? I mean, I think they just lost thousands of dollars because the lottery balls went for the Spurs. And I like that people are spraying booze. Why are they spraying it all over? Because they're not paying for it because it's free. Awesome. Also, I got to think that some of these guys who went up, ran up the tabs, probably right when it was coming down to the wire, they said, screw it. I'm going even bigger. Give me 10 shots. 10 shots of Jack. All right, well, those are, uh, those are nine bucks each, sir. I don't care, 90 bucks, put it on there. I still think that 14% is gonna come through. And it did. So exciting. You know, Wemby, Victor Wembanyama, French dude, gonna be the first overall pick. That's great. But, I mean, have you ever gotten free Jim Beam, free Grey Goose, upper top shelf stuff, top shelf stuff. I wonder if there was any fine print. <laughs> really, like only well drinks or only rail vodka or whatever. I doubt it because the owner, who has like the greatest I own a bar name ever, Chip Ingram, who owns this place, was probably like, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna take my chances on that 86%. Never mind that we got Robinson back in the day and then we got Duncan. There's no way history could repeat itself again, right? Quoting owner Chip Ingram, owner of the Rue Pub in San Antonio. Picked up about 250 tabs. Awesome. He says, we'll leave the money out of it. I bet you will, Chip. It's our 10 year anniversary and we wanna do something good for our customers. We're super happy it happened. I wonder if he is happy it happened. It is an incredible gesture of goodwill. Uh, it's, it puts the place on the map even more, certainly people outside of San Antonio. I have to say, it's a nice looking pub too. The TVs are all spaced around the wall beautifully. It looks clean, it's got high ceilings, it's well lit. I would like to go to the Rue Pub, I really mean it. Especially if Chip Ingram is just saying, and now listen, do you, are you calling BS on him though? Or We're super happy it happened, Chip. You tell me you wouldn't have had a little sigh of relief if maybe the Spurs got the number two pick, if maybe Charlotte jumped up and got it. I'll tell you what, I had another idea. How about the Detroit Pistons? They were 17 and 65. They won 17 games. Cataclysmic, miserable season. They had the same chance of getting the number one pick as the Spurs, 14%. They fell down to number five. 17 wins to get the number five pick. There should have been a bar in Detroit where it's like, if we get the number five pick, all the drinks are free because we have to get the one. And then that one would have hit too. Unbelievable thing. I really like that place, the Rue Pub in San Antonio. Chip Ingram, yeah, we're gonna leave the money out of it. Come on, Chip, 250 tabs. Let's do the math here. I, I'm gonna, let's just say the average tab is what? $100? There's a lot of people that are drinking hard. Let's bounce it up, let's bump it up to 150. So the math tells me 250 times 150, that's over 37 grand, Chip. That's a big night for a San Antonio pub. You know, this is not a Del Frisco Steakhouse in Midtown Manhattan who sneezes at 37,000. That's a big pull. I'm happy about the quote. I'm, I'm happy that you're happy. Never mind. I don't know if Wemby's going to work out at all. Who the hell knows? You guys work out. I'll tell you what. Let's check in on the NBA lottery next year. Someone will copycat this. Whoever is terrible, and that should probably Detroit again, they should do it. Because at least, <laughs> at least then they'll have the satisfaction of being like, look, last year sucked, but now we do this new tradition thanks to owner Chip Ingram. Chip, I love you. If I'm ever in San Antonio, I'm coming by. You will not pay for my drink. I'll pay for the drink. I like your attitude. I like the Rue Pub. I don't know the origin of the name. I don't care. Um, you guys are my pub in San Antonio whenever I'm there. You're my cheers, my San Antonio cheers. Um, let's get on though to, oh no, I forgot. Let's get to 
Oh man, I forgot we were doing this segment today. I have to mentally prepare for this one. So you got you guys are up. You're the stars. Let's get to say anything. All right, kind of feels like uh, almost the uh, the one shining moment at the end of the tournament. Said at the top of the show, this is the season finale for Kyle Brandt's Basement. I will go to Parts Unknown for a while. You could follow at KB Basement. You can follow at Kyle Brandt, of course. But we weren't going to get out of here without hearing from uh, from you lot. Say anything is literal. You call 2524 Brandt. There's an answering machine with a little cassette tape. And you can say anything you want. An opinion, a question, a joke, a, a limerick, an observation, a historical reference, a sports take, a family take. Whatever you want. Anything. Do that. Here we go. I never hear these. I hear them for the first time with you. First up is uh, a gentleman who does not give his location, and we're not even saying what his location is. He just goes by, I don't know if this is a good sign considering the Eminem song by the same name. First up, caller Stan. Say anything. Hey Kyle, this is Stan. I'll just say my name's Stan. Uh, when I was 13, I stole my parents' car uh, joyriding when they went home, ran over a stub and uh, ripped the muffler off the car. Took my dad's tools and a bunch of wire he had in the basement and strapped it all back in there nice and neat. That night my brother gets in the car, backs out of the driveway, tailpipe hits the road. My dad goes out there, sees all the wire and everything all over the muffler. I wasn't old enough to drive, he was. My dad assumed it was him, beat the crap out of him. Mm-hmm. That, that story took a took a drastic turn in the last two seconds. I thought you end the story with, man, my brother got grounded for a month and he was so mad at me. I'm gonna beat the crap out of him. <laughs> Did he actually do that? Uh, times were different back then, weren't they? Hey, um, great, great scam. You, you, the wire. How did you get into the car? Do you have one of those like mechanic skateboard things that you roll on your back that's awesome at 13 years old taking out the car i got a feeling like stan maybe that wasn't your last time like, taking a walk on the wild side have you ever been uh in a penitentiary stan that because that is that is an early on 13 years old to drive the car out and mess it up and be able to it's a lot and then what happened to your brother did he ever forgive you did he blame you did he then beat the crap out of you i have a follow-up questions for this but see, that's the essence of say anything. You think someone's gonna call this show and be like, yeah, you know, I had a thought about a Dak Prescott. No, this guy's like, oh, I got this great story. They're gonna love it. Kyle's gonna love it. Uh, I stole my dad's car and messed it up. I fixed it. My brother took it out. He messed it up. And my dad beat the crap out of him. I gotta call that to Brandt right now. That's Stan. We said say anything and you did. Next up, caller from Jackson, Wyoming. I have visited Jackson, Wyoming. My wife and I went there a couple years ago. I absolutely loved it. Tetons, the mountains. Michael from Jackson, Wyoming. Say anything, Michael. Hi, Kyle. This is Michael from Jackson, Wyoming. My first job out of college was on a live college basketball broadcast. I was way in over my head. had no idea what I was doing and learning on the job. So I woke up at 8.30 a.m., started working. And around 6 p.m., realized I needed to visit Sir Duncan before the show started, if you know what I mean. Because I hadn't left the truck all day, I had no idea where the restrooms were. And I found the nearest camera guy who pointed me in the right direction. And went there as fast as I could. About halfway through my uh, business meeting, if you know what I mean. I realized I never checked the sign before running into the bathroom. And based on the voices I heard, realized I was in the women's swim team locker room bathroom. The entire team was in there talking about the day. I had five minutes before my show started, and I could either run out and make my first show, or I could miss my first ever show. I made the business decision to find my inner Derrick Henry, lower my head, sprint out of the locker room, and heard about a six or seven shrieks of, oh my gosh, is that a man? Got off okay, but didn't attend too many swim meets uh, in the near future. Do 
do we do we have any calls in today's segment from people who aren't criminals? We're, I think we might be two for two. Michael, I'm laughing at the story. You got to make that show though, don't you? you? You, I mean, I understand what you're saying. I think I might need to just miss the show. I can't run through this the women's team, let alone with a six foot piece of toilet paper off the bottom of my shoe. Unbelievable. You got to do it though. I, I would maybe. I don't know, could you conceal your face somehow? Put your hands over your face? I, mean, I would say put your shirt over your face, but then it looks like you're taking your shirt off and then it just it elevates it. It's a no-win situation. I think you made the right choice because you, otherwise you just stay there squatting until they all leave and then you sneak out scot-free, but then you miss the show. You gotta make the first show, got to. He said he had to go see Sir Duncan. Is that a regional phrase? I've never used that for uh, trips to the bathroom trips. I thought you were actually saying you were going to get coffee. Maybe the implication is you already had it. Didn't know that one. Michael, w by the way, I bet that was some show too. I would love to have seen a broadcast of that show. Do you have video or anything like that? Because Michael uh, sits down, you know, sweaty and all flushed and flustered and then starts talking about whatever team you're covering, uh, if their front court could, could control the boards. Unbelievable. Michael, that was great. You know, I'm thinking about the production team here. They slot these calls so that, you know, you make the proper segment so it sort of escalates. If the first one is Stan and the second one's Michael, what is this guy to end the segment? Calls from Green Bay. I assume it's a man. His name's Weston. I know Weston as a hotel. But Weston from Green Bay, you have to follow. I stole the car. My dad beat up my brother. And I was sitting on the toilet in the women's locker room before my show. Weston from Green Bay, swing out of your shoes, buddy. Say anything. Hey, Kyle, it's Weston up in Green Bay. Wanted to give you an embarrassing father-son story from last year. At the time, our sixth grader had started football, and it was his first season of doing tackle. And he wanted to return kicks. So we were spending time in the front yard with me punting him the football and him running back towards me and me tackling him. And after about 10 minutes of that, I was thinking, well, how about instead of me tackling you every time, I don't want you to get hurt. We've been doing this for a while. I'll just try to strip the ball from you instead of tackling you every time. I'm trying to do the fatherly thing, thinking about injury. As mm -hmm. soon as he gets to me, I bring my fist in and go to punch the ball underneath him. And he does this sweet little juke move and right where his face, right where the football was, now his face is. So you can imagine, yep. my fist comes up, instead of hitting the football, hits him right in the chin. My heart instantly sinks into my stomach. I knew right away that, get the tooth or something inside there. And he's playing it off all cool, like, oh, I'm fine, Dad, I'm fine. And I'm like, are you sure, buddy? There's no, no chipped teeth, nothing like that? He's like, well, maybe, I'm not too sure. And he opens up his mouth, and sure enough, he's got a... Nice chip front tooth. Mm. Fast forward to the next day, bring him to the dentist, get the tooth filled with the filling. He comes home and I'm thinking, all right, awesome. No harm, no foul. Still has a great smile, the tooth looks great. Well, not even six hours later, I get a phone call from my wife and she goes, oh my gosh, you'll never guess what happened. And I'm thinking, oh gosh, what now? We already had a chip tooth, what more can happen? Well, our son who had the chip tooth, laying in the hot tub with his younger brother, Younger brother accidentally elbows him in the face and rechips the tooth that just got filled. Yep. So we had to call up the dentist and say, you know, we don't know what happened. His, his, his filling came out and uh, the tooth is chipped. And they're all surprised and they're like, wow, that doesn't usually happen. But, you know, bring him in and we'll, we'll refix the tooth for him. And uh, they did that. And I'm happy to say uh, we're going on a year. No chip piece from any one of our kids, which is a great thing. And hopefully it stays that way. Love what you've done with the basement the first season. Super fun hanging out with you every day and looking forward to season two. And I'll make sure to shut the door, the garage door on the way out. Take care, Kyle. You take care too, Weston. I guess the answer is no, we can't get any callers who aren't criminals today. No, Weston's not a criminal. Um, I do have some thoughts on Weston though. First of all, isn't there a protocol whereby when you go to the dentist for the second time in six hours for your son to have his front tooth knocked out, don't they start asking a few questions, maybe going to the back and making a few calls? <laughs> you know, it's like when Kevin McAllister's mom left the kid home alone again, it, we probably should get involved here. Oh, Weston, that's a tough run. I also, I'll, I'll tackle this, so to speak, from a uh, football perspective. 
followed what you were saying about trying to return kicks and trying to stick a tackle in them. So you thought, I'll strip the ball. You know, ball security is number one. Got to have it high and tight. Weston, was it entirely necessary to try to strip the ball from your sixth grader by punching it? Right? I mean, it's, that's not, I, <laughs> there are many ways to skin a cat here. You, you kind of slap at it or you get your hands on it and you try to pull it or you poke it from behind. I don't know if, if I'm the father, easy for me to judge, but I, I don't know if, if, if the full peanut punch is called for, like it's a circa 2008 Peanut Tillman trying to punch the ball out of Adrian Peterson's arm. <laughs> you got a full fist? Never mind the face, just what if you just missed and hit him in the arm? Like that also is probably not great. The punching, just, just grab the ball and pull it. You, you try to rip the thing out. I don't have a football in here, I would show you. Um, there's many ways to try to teach your child the ball security that can become so loose and carefree, particularly during a play of bedlam, like a kick return. I would stray away from the punch next. It's just not fundamentally sound. And you know, if there's a small little flitch of a muscle fiber right before you do it, you punch your kid right in the teeth. Credit to the kid if he's as tough like you said he was. And, oh, it's no big deal trying to play it off, awesome. And then him and his brother in the hot tub later also knock it off, tough. So if we're doing a box score here on Kyle Brandt's basement, we had someone we had two two calls with fathers harming their sons. <laughs> That's good. Next time we'll make it a perfect game. Stan took the car. Brother got beat up by the dad. Michael sat on the women's bathroom, had to get it out before his show. And then sweet, sweet Weston from Green Bay closing the garage door on the way out and really going to all lengths to teach his son, unnamed but sixth grade, how to hold on to that good old pigskin even when you lose your front teeth beautiful segment. It's exactly what I'm looking for. That's what I want. I like the weird. I don't always like the violence on children, but you know, we can't be perfect. Uh, guys, thank you. And what he said right there was great. Um, I'm going to Skycam. First, I want to thank you. I want to thank the entire Kyle Brand Spaceman staff. They are uh, automatic. They are incredibly professional. They're always on their game, even when I'm not. Uh, I don't always have great days down here. They always do. Immaculate. Great, great, great guys. Everybody involved. Uh, certainly Michael Flynn um, and everybody there. Just thank you very, very, very much. Trevor, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that might have been you. That was your, that your, your alias was Weston. He kind of sounded like you and he's from Green Bay. So, but never mind. Miles, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to go for right now for the last time this season. Let's go to Sky Camp. Let's do it. Let's do it. And I'm going to punch it. Like I'm trying to teach my kid how to hold on to the ball. I love Weston. What a sweet man. Trying to teach his kid. Listen, it's not all about dancing and doing the gritty. It starts with ball security, son. And he's not wrong about that. Oh wait, I gotta throw a dart first. What am I thinking? Here, I'm gonna do this this way. I'll give you the bird's eye view from up here. All right, here's the dart. There's the board. I'm gonna throw the dart and that is, did it make it? Yeah, that's right there. That is a 13. So we go to topic number 13. You can just join me right over here if you want. Topic number 13. Yes, I got the list in front of me. Favorite household chore. <laughs> Is there one? Yeah, I could probably figure one out. Um, it's an interesting question. You would think least favorite household chore would be the question. And that would be uh, anything having to do with the dishwasher. Because I try and I feel like I've been an adult for a long time and I've loaded hundreds of dishwashers and I, anytime I do it, I just have the wrong alignment or angle or anything according to my wife. And then I also hate it just once you run it and then you, you, know, you got to un, unload the dishwasher and put everything away. It's so loud, all the clanking and the plates. My favorite household chore? Um, I think I get a pleasure out of recycling. I take out the recycling. I do it on Wednesday mornings. Today I did it. I like doing that because you kind of feel like you're like saving the world. Like one uh, blue bin full of Gatorade bottles at a time. And you have to separate the paper and, and often I have to go in there Wednesday morning. I'll be like, hold on a second. What is this cardboard Lunchables wrapper doing in here with the plastics? What are you doing, your little devil? Get over here. Get in there with the paper things where you belong so you can be properly recycled. Um, so I like the recycling. Hate the dishwasher. Like the recycling. Um, that's it. I'm going on a little ride. 
and uh, I'm gonna continue that ride until July 24th, in the year of our Lord, 2023. That is when the basement will return, will rise, will relaunch, uh, and we're gonna be ready. And I hope you're gonna be ready too. Please continue to like, subscribe, tweet, post, review, anything you can do to endorse me. I will do all, everything I possibly can to, uh, to help you be glad that you did. Thank you guys, it means a lot. A lot of choices, a lot of places to click, a lot of things to look at, so many. The fact that you're looking at me and listening to me means a lot, and it means a lot to everybody at the KB Basement staff. In the meantime, you know what to do. Exit through the garage, close the door on your way out. Thanks guys, love you.